University of West Indies, we are planning the enrollment strategy for the entire region. We are building capacity for the entire region. And we can see, generally speaking, significant growth and expansion, significant government ex investments right across the Caribbean. And we feel very proud of this because we believe that, that is, this is the way to go. Our concern is here in this particular context. So I hope that answers the question as uh, clearly. Okay. Emmanuel Joseph Barbados today, given all that you've just said, the serious concern regarding Barbados, what do you propose to do? What in, in to, to deal with this situation, to address this situation? In, in every circumstance, it is, it is the quality of the dialogue that, that matters most. It is the interface of strategic planning with available economic resources, with capacity. What you are speaking about is a way in which to expand capacity and at the same time to reduce the cost of education and at the same time to mobilize within the society a sense of the importance of tertiary education. You must begin with a psychological state of mind. Citizens must feel that going into tertiary education, they are building not only for themselves and their families, they are building their countries. The governments, we encourage them to realize that the investment in higher education is not just a cost, it's not an expenditure. It's an investment in the human resource that will drive the country. A country's economy is really uh, an amalgamation of all the choices made by informed individuals. The more informed individuals you have, the more highly articulated invest, uh, uh, citizens you have, the better able they are to plan. We have just returned uh, from China, for example, where we have developed a strategy to move the, the, the curriculum of software engineering into Barbados, into the Cape campus. Why? Because we believe that this is a game changer for the University of the West Indies, and it could be a game changer for Barbados and many other countries. What we are planning to do as from next year is to offer a joint degree with the UWI and the Global Institute for Software Technology in China to offer a joint degree between these two institutions in software engineering and to bring hundreds of young West Indians uh, into Barbados, into the university to have access to software engineering education. This, we believe, is absolutely critical because it's important to bring this young generation into the post-PC internet technology world. Like all countries in the Caribbean, are entirely deserving of having an academic community in their midst. We take it for granted. We take it for granted in, in Barbados uh, in Trinidad and Jamaica. We take it for granted that we have university communities within our societies. But if you, if you live in a society without a university, you feel the impact and the quality of this. I've been speaking, for example, to uh, a prime minister in the Caribbean who says, you know, sometimes I draft uh, a budget and I don't have any economists in the country who I can ask to give me a critical view. There isn't anyone in the country who is a professor of economics. We don't have that kind of resource in our country to guide our policies and development. All countries are entirely deserving of having academic, professional, intellectual communities to sustain civil society and to increase the sophistication of conversations. The discussions we are having uh, with the government of Antigua and Barbuda is to develop their uh, community college to a university college, and to do so, we have proposed within the context of UWI, so that it would become a university college of the University of the West Indies. This is the proposal we have put on the table. We are prepared and we have given the government our assurance. We will work with them step by step to develop this accreditation, international competitiveness. And we will offer them the opportunity to have a broad perimeter so that they can work with other universities. If the Antigua government, for example, says we want to deliver a nursing program, but we wish to deliver that program with an American university. If they say we want to develop a program in industrial design, but we wish to develop that program with a, a European university, we are saying to them, we will craft 
the ordinances of this college in such a way as to give the country maximum freedom, to give the Minister of Education maximum freedom and pursuing degree programs with universities from all over the world, bring those capacities into Antigua for the people of Antigua and Barbuda. So we are here really to work with every single CARICOM government to, to build their colleges, to develop universities, and at the same time to spread the functions and the, and the effectiveness of UWI deeper and deeper across the region. We do not see in any way uh, a, a conflict between the growth of national institutions at university level and the role of UWI. And why is this? It is because we recognize that we need to have a tertiary education revolution in the Caribbean. If we are going to catch up with other countries, we need to spend much more time and effort and resources in tertiary education. But we have to focus that education, I fully agree, we have to focus it on areas of national need and of regional need. We have to focus on the education also for, for wealth creation. The Caribbean is a very poor place. There is too much poverty in the Caribbean. There is still too much poverty in the Caribbean. We need to generate more wealth, and we need to redistribute that wealth. I believe that higher education is a critical part of this. You may recall that here in Barbados, we ask our economists, uh, uh, led by uh, Dr. Moore, to carry out uh, an economic impact analysis of the CAFO campus. That report, when presented to the university community, has attracted the attention of all of the governments, including the government of Antigua and Barbuda, who have asked for that report, because that report is now critical to how they're going to proceed. And that report demonstrated that the CAFO campus alone generates $200 million of economic activity in Barbados every year. It generates more economic activity in the country than it receives in the currency. We generate $80 million of foreign exchange every year. And we are about 2% of the gross domestic product of this country. In other words, it's a major force in the economy. So to conceive of Cato campus as a site of expenditure, and not an investment in economic development. This campus is an economic force in this country. And this is what is interested also, because the other countries want to have campuses that will generate not only social conversations, intellectual conversations, they want campuses that will add to the economic growth of the islands. This is what they're looking for. Now, in respect to Germany, this is just consistent with how the world is going. Every single country in the world that has achieved significant, sustainable development in the last 20 years. We speak of the Asian tigers and what's happened in Southeast Asia. All of those countries have built their economic explosion upon tertiary education. Every single one. South Korea, North Korea. You can speak of you can speak of Singapore. You can go right through China. They have all built their economic development strategies on the basis of the expansion of their universities and their colleges. This is what they have done. Creating a new entrepreneurial mentality, creating professional classes, creating human resources that can attract investments. This is what they have all done. This is the model, in fact, that has been the backbone of the Barbados development up to this moment. That has been very skillfully expanded our enrollment in the Faculty of Social Sciences because the Faculty of Social Sciences uh, carried those programs that 10 years ago were most aligned to the Barbados economy. It's a services economy model uh, which we have put in place and so banking, finance, project management, uh, marketing, tourism studies, those range of disciplines that are critical to the services economy model that is where we expanded careful. So the Faculty of Social Sciences eventually had about 55, almost 58% of all the students at CAFO campus. That was because we were aligning the expansion with the Barbados economy. And it worked simply because we did not develop an unemployment crisis among our graduates. We did not experience that in Barbados. In fact, the, 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 the employer surveys that we have carried out have demonstrated that about 83% of our graduates were finding a job in the first six months of graduation, and that most of them were finding a job in the private sector. 
the data coming out of the KFL, uh, in fact, was superior to North America in that regard. So we recognize that we have planned it scientifically. But in the last five years, we have started to focus on science education technology because we recognize this is a new generation. This is the post-internet generation. This is where we have now focused the resources to turn the KFL campus around. And this is why we have gone into China and developed these strategies to bring Chinese technology into KFL campus and into the University of the West Indies in order to bring capacity to turn the university around to create a new mentality and a new cohort of, of students. The private sector has been magnificent. Uh, KFL's growth has been a partnership between the national and regional and international private sector and this campus. And most of those new and exciting programs at the master's levels especially were programs designed largely for the adult population who wanted to come back to university for training. So when you look at the age distribution of our, of our graduate programs, you'll find that they are skewed towards the older population. And most of these are people who you have described. People who have first degrees already, in many instances, who have been working uh, in the public and private sector. And uh, reach a maturity has said, listen, I need to go back and retool. I need to go back and have access to new pockets of knowledge. I need to become more competitive as a citizen. I need to add more value to my workplace. And they have come back for training. We have captured a significant part of that market. So yes, we are interacting not only with the post-secondary school age cohort, we have focused effectively on the working population. We have focused on the current employed population to meet their needs for change, for retooling, for the acquisition of greater expertise in their particular craft. We have therefore spread our net very wide to accommodate all demographics.